can make up their own mind. And, and we don't know how many other witnesses are out there who have not talked correct. to the media. We, we do not know. Correct. That. And, you know, we spoke, we've heard from several, but these two witnesses describe what seems to me to be a cold-blooded murder. Shooting, the, shooting someone who has their hands up, who is moving away, potentially in the back, that's just murder. And if that's borne out by all the other witnesses, Darren Wilson is in a world of trouble, to put it mildly. Sonny, when you hear the guys in the video saying that Michael Brown was no threat, that he had his hands up, it does seem to corroborate what we've heard from other witnesses who have come forward. Well, of course it does, Anderson, and I've been saying this from the very beginning. All of the witness, te uh, you know, eyewitness accounts really are um, connected. They're all saying the same thing. They're saying that he was running from the police officer and that his hands were up. I don't know what other witness testimony at this point or account we have to hear. The bottom line is having your hands up is the universal sign for surrender. Law enforcement officers are trained with that. Uh, you know, armed services are, are trained in that. And, and so I, I, I guess I'm just so surprised that from the very beginning of this story, from the very, very beginning, everyone was questioning the eyewitness accounts of the people in the neighborhood. I don't really understand why now there's this game changer, why now you have two white witnesses that are somehow not connected to the community and now they seem to be the more credible witnesses. I, I, it, it's really befuddling to me, quite frankly, because now we have six, seven, eight witnesses saying the same thing. Well, well I mean, Sonny, I mean, one of the witnesses who came forward before was the young man who was with uh, Michael Brown uh, sure. and and also had a record of lying to the police. So I think that's why some people would would question his credibility. There was another witness who was very credible in what she said. I mean, when I interviewed her, she was wearing a T-shirt that made her clearly where her sympathies lay very clear. I think that's what what made some people and question but, this. If, if, if I could just add one point, the. What makes this so extraordinary is you have the cell phone video, which is practically contemporaneous. So it's not a matter of there being white, although, frankly, you know, the fact that it is both white and black witnesses, I think, will be significant. But you have practically in real time someone discussing what they saw, and that's just good evidence. And, and, Neil, but, Neil, you know, Neil, 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 let me bring you in here. The, you, I mean, thanks. A, what do you make of the timing of this video? What do you make? I mean, what do you make of what you're hearing? Well, there's a couple of things. The timing, of course, is very, very important. When I saw it, one of the first things I noted, of course, was the location of the police car. As you look at the video, there's a police car that's all the way on the left of the screen. It's got its lights on, and you see the officer who's out rolling the tape. So the scene's being secured. It's well after the shooting. And, and again, that's really important because what you have is conversation that's occurring after the fact. You, the say, well the after the shoot you say well after the shooting. What do you mean? I mean, how, how quickly did the, well, don't they put up police tape pretty quickly? It's hard. No, well, it, it, they're supposed to. But again, it's a big scene. And if you, I've looked at, I went online and looked at the, the photographs that were taken. It's a big scene. There was a lot of area that they had to cover, both from, from Officer uh, Wilson's car all the way up to where the car is that you can see in the video. That's a lot of ground to cover. And again, there are a lot of things that have to happen before you do that. But job number one is supposed to be to secure that scene. So I'm going to we're say to probably we're told minutes. That this, sorry, we're told that this was taken some three minutes after the shooting. That would sound about right. So again, it's after the fact. The other <laughs> thing is the location. Oh, come on, Neil. Are you serious? Wait, wait, wait yes, let, let I am very serious. And then, and then I'm Sonny very finish. serious, and, and I'm very careful about not rushing to judgment, Sonny, and I'm very careful about making sure that you look at everything before you make conclusions. And so what you also have to look at is where they're standing. And if you look at their, their location, where the videographer is and where the two contractors are, they can't hear the beginning of this because they can't see it. Is your suggestion, their vision Neil, is going that they to be didn't limited. see what they saw? Is no, that your my suggestion? objection is 
my objection is like every lawyer would do, and I assume you do too, Sonny, is to make sure that they do in fact see what they claim they saw. And the location of the videographer would suggest that not the entire incident was available to them. They couldn't have seen everything. So again, you also have to look at the distances. From where I was able to determine they were, I don't think it's 50 feet. I think it's probably closer to 100 or more feet from where the actual shooting was. So you're would suggesting that they so, did not see what they are saying that they I'm saw. Suggesting, I'm suggesting that you are leaping to a conclusion without having heard everything. Are I they agree not credible? with Jeff. We are don't they not have credible? all the information. You've got to have the forensics. You need to know where the shell casings are. I want to see what happened. What in about that what car. these witnesses All of those are things saying? Are relevant. These witnesses are they again, not credible? I haven't, I haven't read or I haven't seen what these witnesses are saying, and I'm taking what Anderson says as the truth. But again, I've looked at this video. You see the man raise his arms like this. What does that mean? Is that the same thing as this? I don't know that. But no, but, That's but, but exactly Steve, what a trial is about. But, 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 but Steve, he, was, he spoke to Randy Kay, and Randy Kay said, the re and, and he said the reason he's raising his hands is he's saying this was what Michael Brown was doing when he was shot. And so all I don't of these think that's witnesses, mysterious. All of these witnesses are witnesses that will have to be interviewed by everyone. They're going to have to be presented no to the grand jury, that. and they're going to have to consider all this information. I'm not saying disregard them. I'm saying that we will judge their credibility by all of the evidence, not by one statement.